one from three or something. Okay, Hare Krishna. Uh, my name is Nartaka Gopal, and I currently live in Alachua, Florida. I'm a disciple of Srila Prabhupada. I joined the Hare Krishna movement in 1974 in Miami, Florida. Uh, I'm still a member of the board of directors there, so I go back and forth between Miami and Alachua. Actually, as Prabhupada called it, Maya Ami. <laughs> Maya Ami. <laughs> and um, Mahatma Prabhu is not here this evening, so he's asked me to uh, take his place giving the class for the evening. He said it would be nice to have a lady's point of view for a, for a change. And I'm very happy to be here. Um, I thought I would start... <clears throat> uh, well, we can give a little bit of um, cultural uh, feel for how uh, the relationship between men and women in Krishna consciousness was 50 years ago, 50 or more years ago, and uh, bring it up to the present, see what the difference is and between the present. I've uh, compiled some very, what I think are very beautiful quotes from the Srimad Bhagavatam in this regard. And, uh, and if we have time at the end, I have some uh, a few stories uh, about Srila Prabhupada that I would like to tell, like to share. <laughs> so, uh, well, of course, first of all, uh, philosophically, uh, our ABCs from the Bhagavad Gita teaches us Aham Brahmasmi. We're not the material body. So we understand that actually our real relation, uh, our real identity is uh, eternal spirit, soul, servant of Krishna, servant of God. Um, so Prabhupada says we're all under the misconception. I am American. I am Indian. I'm a Brahmin. I'm a woman, etc. <clears throat> Uh, and all these thoughts are abodajato. They're all sunk in ignorance. <clears throat> so unless we understand our real identity as servants of God and eternal souls, we will be defeated, parabhava, and we will take another body. So while we understand this, that we're not the body, it's just the temporary home for our eternal soul, Still, we are in the material world, and to facilitate uh, our time here, we have to act in a certain way in regards to the role that we are presently in. So, <clears throat> um, so therefore, yes, when we have relationships uh, between men and women in Krishna consciousness, there are certain parameters uh, they have to be observed. <clears throat> so, um, I, I'd like to start out, I'd like to read through some verses that I compiled uh, from the Bhagavatam <clears throat> regarding, basically, it's be this is between husband and wife. <clears throat> First of all, Mother Sita was very submissive faithful, shy, and chaste, always understanding the attitude of her husband. Thus, by her character and her love and her service, she completely attracted the mind of the Lord. So, she attracted the mind of, of Lord Rama. How? By being submissive, faithful, shy, and chaste. She didn't attract him by... Um, wearing promiscuous clothing and being loud and <laughs> she rather the opposite by uh, understanding his attitude and by her love and by her service. Another quote. <clears throat> it is said that Gandhari voluntarily closed her eyes because of the blindness of her husband. A wife's duty is to follow the husband cent per cent. So, I mean, it's almost inconceivable to imagine that someone with perfect vision is going to, for the rest of their life, deny themselves 
any vision by covering their eyes, and that's precisely what Gandhari Mataji did. Why? Because she didn't want to think herself superior. Sorry, we have a bat in the... Uh, in the <laughs> we have a bat flying around the uh, broadcast room. So um, if you could get him out, that'd be nice, like by opening the door. <laughs> so she didn't, Gandhari didn't want to uh, feel in any way superior, that she was superior to her husband. Um, she wanted to be humble, so she therefore uh, covered her eyes for her whole, whole rest of her life. <clears throat> uh, another quote. The wife must see the tendencies of the husband and must be prepared to follow him. From Mahabharata we learn that when Gandhari understood that her husband would be Dhritarashtra, who was blind, she immediately began to practice blindness herself. Thus she covered her eyes and played the part of a blind woman. She decided that since her husband was blind, she must also act like a blind woman. Otherwise she would be proud of her eyes and her husband would be seen to her as inferior. So she didn't want that. <clears throat> and this is another very important quote. If women are given the freedom to mingle with men like equals, which they now claim to be, they cannot keep their propriety. So this mingling with men like equals, this is um, a great downfall. Uh, for women, actually, <clears throat> because it's actually, uh, we're going to see later in the words of our grandfather Bhishma and uh, from the Bhagavad Gita that when women are shy and chaste, this is actually a great uh, control valve, it helps to control the mind of the man. <clears throat> Another quote, the wife is dependent on the husband, and if the husband is a Vaishnava, then she naturally shares the devotional service of the husband because she renders him service. This reciprocation of service and love between husband and wife is the ideal of householder's life. <clears throat> so actually, uh, Srila Prabhupada uh, one time told the men, um, you should look at these women as goddesses of fortune and not as your object of enjoyment. <clears throat> so actually, as um, husband and wife, we should see each other as servants of Krishna instead of servants of our senses. And when the Grihastas chant together daily, um, teach the children to sing, teach them to do some puja, <clears throat> then our lives become auspicious and actually the internal potency can take over. <clears throat> Another quote, the husband is a very intimate friend to the wife. Therefore the wife must render service just like an intimate friend. And at the same time, she must understand that the husband is superior in position, and thus she must offer him all respect. Even if there is some wrong on the part of the husband, the wife must tolerate it. <clears throat> and thus there will be no misunderstanding between husband and wife. As my husband says, I'm always right, and even when I'm wrong, I'm right. 